on Prime Crime. I'm wondering if somebody can do a wellness check on my brother uh, and his family. A federal investigation leads to a sickening discovery. I've seen a lot of bad stuff as state attorney. This is especially horrific. But as details emerge, the case gets complicated. I don't think of anything. I have no idea where I was, where I am. Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we break down the most high-profile and memorable true crime cases. When federal agents attempt to make a routine arrest, they end up finding something that is truly unthinkable. I'm wondering if somebody can do a wellness check on my brother uh, and his family. It's just after Christmas 2019 in Celebration, Florida. Anthony Tote, his wife Megan, along with their three children, 13-year-old Alec, 11-year-old Tyler, and four-year-old Zoe, haven't been heard from in weeks. I can't seem to get a hold of them. My sister-in-law was making a comment about, and we just kind of put it all together, about um, basically the world ending on the 28th and nobody has talked to them. Something to know about Anthony Tote leading up to this disconnect. The physical therapist was actually under surveillance by federal authorities. What is he wanted for? Uh, healthcare fraud. Healthcare fraud could be overbilling or billing for services not rendered, basically fraud against Medicare or Medicaid. It seemed pretty clear that he was in a very bad financial situation. He was trying to arrange it so his children and wife would have a lot of enjoyment. They moved 15 minutes away from Disney World. He spent a lot of money on the condominium. When that started to unravel, uh, he, he knew that he would be viewed as a failure. He was losing control in his life, losing control financially. So the plan was we were going to do some surveillance, get some info, take our photos, see if we could find any information about where this family was. In January 2020, armed with an arrest warrant, deputies moved in on tote. Tony, talk. Police! Tony, come to the door. We knocked. No one came to the door. The door was unlocked, so we popped it open. We slowly made our way in. Um, he was at the top of the stairs. Tony, you coming downstairs? All right. Tony, you upstairs? Hey, come downstairs, bud. Everything's all right, man. Just stay calm. Huh? Any children you? I can't remember if you went to the system last year. We asked him where Megan and the children were. He said uh, Megan was upstairs sleeping, and he also like called for her. We were getting no answer. What's your wife's name? Megan. Megan's in there, either. Megan. All right, come on down, bud. We made our way upstairs to check on, on the children and check on Megan. The master bedroom door was open. The locked door. Megan? What officials find next is unimaginable. Same I didn't condition. see Megan because she was, the way her blanket was. And you saw the children. Yeah. All right, they're all pretty much black. The two boys, I just saw Zoe's hair. Okay. Um, but yes, the two boys are as black as this leather. There's also a dog, so just there may be another deceased. Megan, Alec, Tyler, Zoe, and the family dog Breezy are all found dead, decomposing in an upstairs bedroom. It was especially bloody. You had people who were drugged, the children were drugged with Benadryl, and then you have uh, some uh, brutal stabbings. What begins as a fraud case suddenly turns into a horrifying homicide investigation. He lived with the bodies in the condominium for about three weeks. During that time, the, according to the police, the smell of decomposition was extremely pronounced. Tote is then taken to the hospital after he appears disoriented and unstable. In fact, he said he had consumed a quantity of Benadryl pills. It's there when he speaks with police for the very first time. Tell me what happened. My wife is, I want to say, chronically ill. The liver issues and all that kind of stuff. And what was told to me is that when people die, they go to different aspects. And then sometimes never meet up in the light energy aspect. He talked about how she started to adopt Eastern religions. She started getting involved in other, almost like fantastical beliefs, like medical mediums and stuff. Friday night, we, it was supposed to be a, a, three, a three step plan 
So we all stay together and go up. You know, one person separated from the other. The confession, uh, well, it was a confession. There was a tremendous level of explanation going on. We took Megan and we suffocated and uh, as needed and um, tried to get the aortic valve, which is deep. And we wanted to both go very, uh, everybody to go very peacefully. We wanted everybody together. Okay. And that was my wife's wish, everybody together. He would say that was essentially all a dream, that he didn't remember any of that. He was in some type of zombie state. He was looking to blame the drugs for his confession. You murdered your three children. Mm -hmm. I know. You take full responsibility for that? I don't want to take full responsibility. Meg was involved, but I don't take full responsibility. Well, Megan's dead. But is Anthony Tote the one responsible for this? Where we're at right now is a very sad state. All three of your children are dead. I know. Your wife is dead. I know. You're alive. Unfortunately. What are you most upset about? That I'm here. That I'm not with my family. In January 2020, federal authorities show up to arrest a Connecticut man living part-time in Florida with his family over an alleged insurance scam. But their investigation leads them to a revolting discovery in the family's rental home, the decomposing bodies of Tote's wife, their three young children, and the family dog. Investigators now need to make sense of what exactly happened in that house. When Tote is brought in for questioning a few days later, he shares even more specifics about the killings. My wife has started, she began watching these videos talking about the afterlife. We started researching and researching and researching and then we started finding more about the world is coming to the end, the apocalyptic end, to avoid this, to all go together. Die together? Die together, that's correct. Because my wife's been chronically ill for a while, this really appealed to her, maybe the, the salvation and everlasting life. This was a guy who had perhaps some delusions, but not enough to make him not understand the difference between right and wrong. We had sat down and talked with the boys and Zoe just on you know, what would happen if mommy died, you know, how would you feel, what happened if daddy died, what would you feel? And because his response was like, we don't want you to die, we want to die with you. According to the police, Anthony used a variety of methods, uh, the Benadryl. Something came on TV about cough medicine, okay? So could they have some cough medicine that I put them to sleep, like overdose of cough medicine, just put them to sleep. Didn't work. And we said, we're just gonna to have to do some sort of examination, okay? Plead to death. First, Tote goes into detail about killing four-year-old Zoe. She rolled and started squiggling, and I put my hand over her mouth, and then put a pillow over top of her. She started to fade away, and I just held that until there was no motion left. It's one thing to kind of mumble an answer, like, oh, I killed somebody. It's something else to give a very detailed explanation of every single homicide that occurred. So Zoe's gone, and then what happens? We go into the Alex room. We're just in there, just eyeing each other, just gaining the confidence. I stabbed him, and he started kicking. I was trying to get up, and I reached around with my hand and held his um, nose in his mouth. When it came to 11-year-old Tyler, Tote says he and Megan were afraid their son would escape. And I was able to get in and get the knife right in there. I got, I got it, it started bleeding quite a bit. He went really, really, really quick. This was especially horrific, and I've seen a lot of bad stuff as state attorney, uh, but this one, you destroy an entire family. We decided that the, you know, the dog went, we went the dog with us, and I was able to hold the not in the brush out and her um, nose closed, and she went peacefully. Tote then says Megan wanted to die next. Meg wanted to go. Gave her the knife, and I laid next to her, and she put the knife into her stomach. We were laying there for about 45 minutes. After she stabbed herself, she says, Isn't, I feel nothing happening. So she decided to do, go through her liver. She was stabbed with deep knife wounds multiple times. With two hands pushed in. She pulled it out, she put the knife right next to her, and I just laid with her. It seemed like hours went by and nothing else happened. She goes, I want this ended now. 
She goes, I want to, I want you to take the pillowcase, put it, put a pillow, and put it over my head. She goes, if you love me, you can do this. I want to be with my babies. So I said, why don't you take some more Benadryl? So at least you're not going to fight me, and I'll do it. So then it, it came to me. He was pretty efficient at killing them all. That's what he wanted to achieve, and he did it in a pretty straightforward fashion. But when he talked about ending his own life, he couldn't figure out how to do it. We didn't get there till what Monday. What were you doing there during this time frame? We're talking over two weeks. I tried to kill myself. I tried the razor blade to zip tie around the neck. I was trying to figure out how to go through and fall in the knife in the right direction. In all honesty, I chickened out and cowered it out with a knife. So we see kind of a disconnect there between the methods that he used that were successful and then these you know, alleged methods that he used that were not successful. You've upset a lot of people. You guys seem very planned. This is very methodical. There was, I mean, other than the fact about you taking your own life, uh, which I, I, I'm still kind of questioning. I think the reason Anthony Tote initially confessed is because that's really where he was in life at that point. I think he had um, abandoned all hope. You take full, you take full responsibility. Okay. Once it's done. Okay. If I could commit suicide right now, I would. Okay. Well, we're not going to let you do that. Tote is charged with the murders of his family and animal cruelty for allegedly killing the dog. But nothing is as simple as it may seem. Coming up, what Anthony Tote previously told investigators may not be the real story. I have nothing to do but sit here and reflect. I know the story, I know what happened, I know, you know, I've forgiven her. Did you guys celebrate Christmas Day? No. No, the kids were dead before Christmas. Connecticut man Anthony Tote is charged with the murder of his family after they were found dead and decomposing in their Celebration Florida home in January 2020. From the start of the investigation, Tote seemed to be fully cooperating and telling officials everything that happened. How long would you say it took to kill Alec? That one, I have no idea. It, did, it went quickly. But later on, Tote speaks with his sister from jail. On these recorded calls, his account is radically different. I want you to know a couple of things. And I absolutely loved, honored, and obeyed Megan through everything. Because when I think come out, you should talk about it right now, realize that, okay? Anthony Tote's confession, I think, really hurt him. Uh, he tried to work to back away from it pretty soon after he, he made it. I don't remember anything pretty much over Christmas and the first week I got here. I don't remember coming here. I don't remember anything after the events what happened. I have no idea where I was, where I am. The only thing I remember is being at the hospital. His claim was that he was kind of out of it. He had hit his head. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't remember the confession. Tote tells his sister he wasn't even at home the night his family was killed, that he was actually at their nearby condo. The night everything happened, okay, I'm gonna tell you this. Um, I went over because Zoe wanted her Mi Mickey silver necklace for a reason, but you'll find out later. I ended up falling asleep. Let's just leave it at that, okay? I fell asleep for, I was supposed to wake up at 11, 11.30, and didn't wake up the next morning. I have no idea. But I told investigators because I was completely stoked. I was asleep. He supposedly came home to his dead children and his wife who was trying to commit suicide. I miss you guys tremendously. I miss Megan and the kids. I can't believe she did this. When investigators first looked into the Anthony Tote case, they believed 100% that he was guilty. But of course, they had to investigate all aspects. One of those was that Megan had killed their three children and then had a discussion with him, hurt herself, and then killed herself uh, with, with a knife. So that leaves this, this possibility that Megan was the killer and committed suicide. Love is blind sometimes, and when things happen, they are not expecting. These aren't things that we should talk about now. I have nothing to hide, so just know that I'll protect Megan so you see them there again. His narrative was that she essentially lost her mind, and he was trying to support her during that time. 
and he still wanted to protect her. Even in death, he wanted to defend her reputation. Those that know you just want to understand. I want to make you into some horrors. I really do. That's funny. I enjoy this. You what? I do any of this. It's pretty unusual for a mother to kill her children. It does happen, and there have been really you know, famous, you know, notorious cases where it's happened. I haven't said goodbye to them yet, so that's the first thing I'm going to do when I get out of here. I'm at peace with what happened, and I'm ready to tell the world my story, and tell the story of what happened, and to go home. Up next, who really killed Megan, Alec, Tyler, Zoe, and Breezy? She was trying to explain to me what she did. She was trying to... <laughs> Make me understand. We didn't want to live without them either. We wanted to bring the whole family together and make it transverse together. After authorities find the dead bodies of Anthony Tote's wife, Megan, three children, Alec, Tyler, and Zoe, and family dog, Breezy, in their Florida home, the former physical therapist is arrested and charged with murder and animal cruelty. Tote would initially confess to the killings, but then in recorded jailhouse phone calls with his sister, he claimed he wasn't the killer, but rather, it was Megan. Everything really changed when Megan got sick. And uh, it's a third, yeah. Really, the whole situation over and over again. In April of 2022, it would be up to a jury to sort out the truth as Anthony Tote's criminal trial began. You're going to be informed by the defendant in his interview that he is the one that took the lives of Megan Tote, Alexander Tote, Tyler Tote, and Zoe Tote. Tote's defense presented one sole witness, Anthony Tote himself. I came home and my kids were dead. It was the most horrible day of my life. And what I mean more horrible is my wife Died in front of me also. Did you kill your family? No. If you put it all on the wife, the wife's not there to rebut it. And that can work sometimes. If you can portray the victim in a negative light. I didn't even see this coming. They say, you know, blindsided. This was a blindside by like a Mack truck with filled with dynamite. Tote then faced cross-examination by the prosecution. You told detectives that you went into Zoe's room, gathered the courage, and you rolled over on top of your daughter until she suffocated. Isn't you know, that what you told law enforcement? Is this a yes or no question? Or do you want a the yes answer? Yes or no question. That is what the video, yes, showed you. And your testimony here today is that Megan did it. Megan killed Zoe. He kept using that phrase, that's what the video says, that's what the video shows as if it was some type of alternate universe. You told law enforcement oh, yeah. multiple on the video. times that Tyler was fast and he was- You saw the video and you saw the video also of saying, I said things that have been proven incorrect. That's not responsive to my question. Actually it is, but yes? I don't remember anything after I left the house till I got to jail. Well, that is you in the video, right? It's a sickly version of me, yes. Thank so, God I didn't tell you I assassinated here's Kennedy. Here's question. Where the Benadryl comes in, and his mental health issues, it could try to convince a jury that he did not know what he was saying when he was confessing. You told law enforcement on multiple occasions that you went into Alec's room and you stabbed Alec and you suffocated Alec. Isn't that correct? That's partially correct. And your testimony today is that that is not true. My testimony today is the fact that Megan killed her kids and killed herself. But was the jury convinced? After deliberating for just over six hours, they returned their verdict. State of Florida versus Anthony John Tote. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of cruelty to animals. Anthony Tote was convicted across the board. I think they could have made an okay argument that it was possible that Megan was the killer, but there was no way to get around that confession. Uh, no matter what they said, when that confession came in, that was the end of it. His whole defense is undermined by the fact that he stayed with the dead bodies. 
This guy had the means, motive, and opportunity. He was desperate financially, he was acting irrationally, and he committed this horrific crime and then tried to cover it up. Just before Toad is sentenced, he addresses the court one last time. This was a personal catastrophe in everybody's life in my family, including myself. I maintain my innocence. I loved my wife. I loved my children. I was not there the night my children died. I think this speaks to that whole kind of pressured speech vibe that Anthony gives off. He demands that people listen to him. He can't comprehend that they wouldn't believe his lies. You know, maybe it was just his last chance of getting attention. So This is not helping you in the, in the, from this progress on, so I encourage you to... I'm sorry. I did not do this. To profess his innocence till the end it just adds insult to injury. Here's a guy who perhaps believes his own lies or is just a, such a megalomaniac that thinks he could talk his way out of it. A jury has unanimously determined after listening to the evidence presented that you, Anthony John Tote, are a destroyer of worlds. You are sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. This was a way of exerting what little control he had left in the world. And that's why the judge said, you're a destroyer of worlds. That was the only power he had left to destroy others' worlds, and he did. But now he's got to pay the price. The Anthony Toad case presented a lot of questions in terms of how these heinous crimes were committed and when and where. But looking back on all of the conflicting statements, we never really got an answer as to the why. And unfortunately, that is a question that may never be answered. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. As always, thank you for joining us. And until next time, stay safe.